I'm Cheryl Waters. You're listening to The Midday Show on KEXP, where the music matters. You can find us at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming worldwide at kexp.org. I am beyond excited to have Orville Peck live in the studios today, a brand new album called Pony. We're delighted to have you sharing music with us from that new one today. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Ah, it's great to have you here, and I cannot wait to have these songs live on KEXP. It's Orville Peck. Take it away. It's gone off full. It's gone rise again. Keeping track of everything we lose. Another whole man. Tell me you can't stay.
fell in love with a rider. Dirt king, black crown. Six months on a knucklehead hog. I like him best when he's not around. He gets me high. Sensation when the only feeling that you know is fear. I don't know why. Peck live on KEXP songs from his debut album Pony. I never get tired of hearing these songs live. <laughs> Thank you. I actually never get tired of hearing them on the record either. There's so much to dive into on this new record. Your music has definitely some contemporary elements. You've got some dream pop riffs there and even a little shoegaze and grunge, but mm -hmm. <laughs> your sound is solidly rooted in country music. I mean, I think Merle, Willie, Dolly, Patsy, that's where my mind goes and many, many others. And you've said in interviews that this record or your whole project is, uh, your whole band is a love song or a love to the music that you love. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh I grew up loving all kinds of music, and I think that's probably where uh, some of those other influences you mentioned creep in. But uh, country has always been a, a, a very special genre close to my heart, and I've, I just think it's the most exciting kind of eclectic genre of, uh, you know, some of the people you named, like the outlaw musicians like Willie and Waylon and, you know, uh, Johnny Cash, and then you have the, the flamboyance and the kind of theatricality of Dolly Parton or, you know, I, I just think that country has always stood out to me as something just that you can really sink your teeth into. And so what I wanted to do was just create what I felt was uh, a country western album, which is, you know, I guess rooted in sincerity, but with all of those things, wit and wordplay and humor and sadness and heartbreak. I think that's what makes a good country album for me. And storytelling makes a great country album, and there's great stories on this record, Pony. I mean, there's sweeping settings, and you've got bold characters here. And you've said also that this is sort of a record about love in many ways. Can you tell me about what these songs are about for you? 
Yeah, it's funny. I mean, I feel like, uh, you know, heartbreak is a pretty common theme in, in a lot of country music, but I think I wasn't even aware of it maybe until I'd compiled all these stories of mine, but I, I started to realize that they were less about heartbreak in a romantic sense. I mean, I do sing about past relationships and things like that, but uh, a lot of the songs on Pony are actually about uh, heartbreak kind of within myself and uh, figuring out, uh, you know, who I am and having been someone who traveled around so much and haven't really had a chance to be settled that much. Uh, I think there's an innate loneliness in that, so I think that's probably <laughs> probably why I fell in love with the idea of cowboys at a very young age, because I kind of felt a bit like an outlaw my whole life. <laughs> well, it's a very important aspect of love that you talk about on here. Um, you talked about the theatricality of Dolly. You bring a little bit of theatricality <laughs> to Orville Peck. I mean, you may wear a mask, but your feelings are laid bare on Pony, and you've talked a little bit about how um, wearing that mask keeps you anything but hiding. Yeah, I mean, I think, I joke that, you know, I woke up and it was just on my face and now I can't get it off. But <laughs> <laughs> I think the mask, honestly, is, a <clears throat> it's allowed me to kind of uh, have a different confidence in the way I, I write songs and what I sing about, you know. I've played in a lot of bands over the years and written a lot of music, but I, I think this is probably the most sincere I've ever been with regards to lyrics and songwriting which some people may find ironic, but uh, are hard to believe, seeing as, you know, there's an aesthetic involved. But uh, to me, I think the mask actually opens me up, and I think it also opens other people up as well. And I think the connection that happens in our live shows and, uh, you know, when I hang out and meet people after, I, I don't think, after a while, I just think that it disappears, actually. You've actually studied mask making as an art form. Tell me about that and what you brought from that to this project, or was that even what spurred the idea? Yeah, I mean, I think I've always been fascinated by masks. Uh, I'm from a, a culture originally that is, uh, has a lot of history of mask making. And then, yeah, I studied uh, the Jacques Lecoq mask form for uh, two years uh, when I was in my mid-20s. I just think that it's kind of fascinating. The, f the philosophy behind masks, I think, is really interesting. Kind of what I just spoke about previously, where you know, you would assume it's something that hides something or conceals something, but it actually is a really incredible tool to open up other areas of someone. Uh, it's, a, it's a really fascinating art form, and it goes back, you know, I mean, thousands of years. So it's really an interesting thing, I think. You've talked also about um, seeing your music visually. I mean, you're an artist in many forms, and you make your masks, as a matter of fact. But tell me how that translates into your music, sort of having a visual image of what you want to say. I mean, I think that's always been important to me. I think, you know, I, I, all the bands I've always kind of loved or all the artists that I kind of have always found inspiring, you know, they've had a fully kind of realized aesthetic. I mean, for me, it, uh, I really love the, the side of country music. That's like, you know, even Porter Wagner, who was a pretty conservative voice in country music. I mean, he used to wear rhinestone nudie suits and fringe. And so I, I just find that, uh, you know, contrast of these men singing about, you know, heartbreak and these tender moments and they're kind of these like men and they're, and they're wearing like bedazzled outfits. I mean, I just think that that's so cool. You know, I just think that that really appeals to me. So I, you know, when I started doing this, this project, I wanted to have a fully realized aesthetic that people could really get behind and sink their teeth into. Cause that's, you know, that's what I like if I think about people like David Bowie or, you know, Grace Jones or artists like that where, it, you know, David Bowie wrote amazing songs and incredible lyrics, but that was just the beginning. You know, it didn't end with the music. There was the look and the legend. And I mean, those are things that inspire me. And I, I don't know, that's just the kind of art I, I like to get behind. Well, the visual image is very fun for the audience as well. I mean, looking at your mask and all of you look amazing here. You do amazing with the fashion, but I think of you like down the years growing as an artist, I can totally see you like uh, collaborating with some wild fashion you know, icon. That yeah, could be I fun. think yeah, there's hopefully some things in the works already. And oh, okay, <laughs> that'd be great. Um, another thing that is very resting about Orville Peck is your voice. It's so elastic and you're, you're singing in so many different ranges. Are you, are you trained as a singer? There's a uh, lot of control there. I am trained, yeah. I uh, I used to only sing quite high for a long time, uh, and then I went and did some kind of holistic voice training, which, 
is a lot of kind of, you know, picturing apples in your throat and kind of like stuff like that. But the, I mean, it worked. I found basically a, a two or three octaves lower than what I thought I could sing. So I grew my range like quite extensively over, uh, only in the last probably five years I've been singing low. Uh, but it's interesting because I feel like that, that part of my range connects a little bit more with my emotional kind of core. So. That's probably why I find it easier to sing uh, these songs in that range. Well, it is so wonderful to see you live, and this is your first album. You've been playing a bit, but how have these shows been? How's it been playing in front of an audience, and what have you been getting back from, from these live shows? It's honestly just been so incredible. We've uh, been really lucky that we've you know, sold out, I think, pretty much every show on the tour so far. Uh, so, you know, obviously playing to a packed room is, is one thing, and that's great, but you know, the response of people that seem to connect to this album uh, and come up and talk to me about their stories and you know their kind of history as country fans or feeling like they were alienated from the country scene or just you know what they feel inspired by the kind of aesthetic i mean i've heard some pretty incredible stories from people and i think that's really touching i mean the the thing that people remark on and it's definitely something i think is the best part is and we all talk about is the the varied amount of different kind of people in the audience at an Orville Peck show. I mean, you'll have like a drag queen standing next to like a crust punk, standing next to, you know, an 85 year old guy with like a Hank Williams shirt. And all those people have something in common, which is Orville Peck. And I mean, that's the most touching thing of all. Yeah, you really can't ask for more than that. No. <laughs> um, you referred to your band there a minute ago. I want to give them a shout out. I definitely recognize uh, many of the members in here from Friggs and uh, a great band. You all sound fantastic. And we're so excited you're going to be back in the Northwest August 24th. You'll be playing at Thing Festival. And uh, so happy to have you here. Pony is an incredible record. Thanks Thank so, you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us. And you got a couple more songs? Yeah, we got a couple more for you. It's Orville Peck live on KEXP. <laughs> the sun goes down another dreamless night. You ride by my side, you wake me up, you say it's time to ride. In the dead of night, strange canyon road, strange look in your eyes. You shut them as we fly, as we fly. Star Hollow Town, Carson City Light. Baby, let's get high, spend the Johnny's cash, it's another ride. Laugh until we cry, you say go fast, I say hold on tight. In the dead of
Some Orville Peck whistling through the fringe on that song, Take You Back, from the debut album Pony. That's out on Sub Pop Records. So wonderful to have you here today. Thanks for having us. We'll see you again in August when you're here for Thing. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're listening to KEXP Seattle. 
Yay! <laughs> that was awesome. Hey, some fans behind you, by the way. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.